Hi everyone, this is Nurse Ryan, and today we're going to go over some practice questions for altered fluid and electrolytes as an introduction to pathophysiology. In this quiz, we'll review some of the basics, including fluid, electrolytes, and acid-base balance. I'll walk you through the answers and rationales for each question. Starting off with question number one. On assessment, which of the following signs will a client with dehydration most likely present with? And for each question, I'll leave a bit of a break where you can pause the video and think about the answer. The answer here is C, increased heart rate. Heart rate will most likely increase as a compensatory mechanism of dehydration to increase blood flow and oxygen supply to the body. Diarrhea is a cause of dehydration but will not always be present. Moving on to question number two, intracellular fluid makes up more total volume than extracellular fluid. And the answer here is A, true. About 66% or two thirds of the fluid that makes up the human body is intracellular, fluid that is contained in the cytoplasm inside the cells. About 33% or one third is extracellular, fluid that is contained outside of the cells. Question number three, you are caring for a client with an acid-base imbalance of the blood. Which of the following systems will act the quickest to control the serum pH levels initially? The answer here is C, the buffer system. The sodium bicarbonate to carbonic acid buffer system acts almost immediately to maintain serum pH, while the respiratory system and the renal system can take minutes to hours to act respectively. Question number four, which of the following clients is most likely to experience hypokalemia? The answer here is B, a client with an increase in loop diuretic use. Increased loop diuretic use will lead to an increase in urination and the excretion of important electrolytes like potassium. When clients are taking diuretics, especially loop diuretics, it is important to monitor potassium levels. All of the other options may lead to hyperkalemia. Question number five, which of the following clients is at the greatest risk for developing hypomagnesemia? This one is C, a client with chronic alcoholism. Hypomagnesemia can result from malabsorption or malnutrition, which is often associated with alcoholism. All of the other options may lead to hypermagnesemia. Question six, a patient with liver cirrhosis has recently been told that he is at risk for developing ascites. The patient requires further teaching about ascites. How should the nurse best explain ascites to the patient? This one is A, ascites refers to the abnormal accumulation of fluid in the abdominal cavity. Ascites is most often caused by liver scarring or cirrhosis. An increase in portal hypertension causes accumulation of fluid within the abdomen. Question number seven, an increase in parathyroid hormone production would result in A or N. And this one is A, an increase in blood calcium levels. Parathyroid hormone is typically secreted in response to low blood calcium levels. Parathyroid hormone draws calcium from the bones and releases it into the blood. However, overactive parathyroid glands cause an excess of parathyroid hormone secretion, drawing too much calcium from the bones into the blood, raising blood calcium levels to an abnormally high level. Moving on to question number eight, which of the following lab values will the nurse be most concerned about for her new admission? The answer is A, potassium at a level of 5.7 millimoles per liter. The normal range for potassium is approximately 3.5 to 5. When potassium is too high or too low, cardiac arrhythmias and cardiac arrest may occur, including many other signs and symptoms. Sodium is slightly out of range here, but the potassium level should be the main focus. Question number nine, hyperventilation may lead to alkalosis. And this is A, true. If a client is hyperventilating, they are excreting more PaCO2 than normal. 
PaCO2 can be considered a respiratory acid. A decrease in a respiratory acid would lead to respiratory alkalosis. And for the last question of this quiz number 10, which of the following should the nurse be most worried about for a client with hyperphosphatemia? And the answer here is B, hypocalcemia. Phosphate binds with calcium, essentially decreasing ionized calcium levels in the blood. Hyperphosphatemia, or elevated phosphate levels in the blood, increases the amount of that bound phosphate and calcium, which again decreases calcium levels in the blood and can lead to acute hypocalcemia. And that's it for our Altered Fluid and Electrolytes quiz. If this video has helped you out, please consider leaving a like and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. If you have any questions or would like me to review a specific drug or topic, please let me know in the comments, and thanks for watching.